Hi guys, welcome back to The Mighty Blues and welcome back today to another episode of the podcast. It is episode number seven. I hope you all are doing well. Hope you all have had a good week so far. We are here to sit down and talk about Everton's 2-0 win over Nottingham Forest on Sunday as well as look ahead to tomorrow's Merseyside derby at Goodison Park. Huge, huge week for the Toffees this week. Could potentially see ourselves out of the relegation zone and safe with a couple of huge, huge results. But given one of those games is against the side going for the Premier League title this season, um, yeah, it will not be the easiest week of football. I'll tell you that. But it does help that we're coming into it off the back of a huge, huge win on Sunday against Nottingham Forest. An absolutely fantastic result for Everton. We're going to talk about it in greater detail today. I just want to apologise before we go any further. There wasn't a podcast episode last week. I think I mentioned there on my instant match reaction to the Forest game that there were a couple of reasons for that. One of those reasons was I had quite a busy week last week with work and and in my personal life, so I didn't quite find the time to sit down and, and sort of dedicate an hour to talking about Everton getting absolutely bladdered 6-0 by Chelsea. Um, And by the time it had come round to having a moment to sit down and talk about it, I think it was Friday, sort of Saturday time, and I thought, you know what, we'll just leave it and we'll just focus on going into tomorrow's game with enough uh, as much positivity as possible I was originally going to talk a little bit about the Chelsea game in this episode but I feel like it's a little bit null and void now it was an absolutely horrendous horrendous evening Um, we have many of them a season don't we as Evertonians, we have numerous games in in a season where we turn up and we're just absolutely horrific, and the opposition team puts four, five, you know, six past us in in in, in this occasion. Um, and you sort of we sort of just have to move on and forget about it and not think about it again. And it's difficult to do that at the time because of how frustrating and 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 how annoying it is to watch Everton put a performance in like they did at Stamford Bridge and you know effectively throw the towel in a two nil down and gift. Chelsea um, some of the easiest goals they will score all season and especially a Chelsea team who have been <clears throat> mediocre to say the least this season and the week before we played them had, had, had just drawn against Burnley with, you know, with 10 men so I really did think it was an opportunity for Everton to turn up at Stanford Bridge and, and, and give them a little bit of a game and put a performance in and, and, and try and sort of come away with something but obviously that wasn't the case it was the complete opposite of that we were absolutely disastrous pretty much from the first minute until the last minute and I know nobody wants to talk about that game of football again so we'll put it to one side we'll go gloss over it, we'll forget it ever happened and we'll focus on the game that followed because as the saying goes, you are only as good as your last performance, a boxer is only as good as their last fight and Everton's last performance prior to Sunday was absolutely horrific, whereas now we can sit here and talk about a win as our last performance which is absolutely fantastic news, a brilliant 2-0 win against Nottingham Forest on Sunday. A much, much better performance from Everton. Were we absolutely fantastic in the game? No, we weren't. I thought we were better than what we have been of late. I thought we were creating more than what we have been at late. And I thought we... <clears throat> actively wanted to win the game, which is not something I've been able to say about Everton a lot recently. Um, One of my biggest sort of criticisms of Sean Dyche and one of my biggest biggest criticisms of this Everton team is at times they've looked like they've not really wanted to go out and win a game it's been more of not losing and, and often um, you know that can come back and bite you on the arse a little bit and we've seen that a, a number of times sort of from December until now where the manager has set us up purely with the objective to not lose a game, defend well, um, you know, be tight at the back and, and try and hit teams on the counter-attack. And then we've conceded, you know, in the, in the opening half an hour or we've conceded the stupid goal and all of a sudden the plan's gone out the window and for the rest of the game, the players have just looked like they haven't got a clue what they're doing, like they haven't got a clue what they're supposed to be doing. So it was a nice change <clears throat> and it was a nice breath of fresh air to, to to watch an Everton team for the first time in, in a while actively try and go and win a game and we needed to as well it was absolutely imperative that we did that on Sunday because this was a huge huge game you know in in, in many ways this was the uh, the old classic six pointer 
wasn't it? Two teams who were, you know, towards the bottom end of the, the Premier League table. Nottingham Forest on 26 points. Everton were on 27 before this game, albeit Everton obviously have got a game in hand, which is that Merseyside derby on Wednesday. And, you know, it was a it was a big game. Whoever won that game, you know, was able to to, to take a, you know, a, a, a big step forward and, um, you know, sort of elongate, is that the right word? Increase, we'll say, increase uh, the lead on on, on the other uh, in in the Premier League table, and thankfully it was Everton who managed to do that. Thirty points now, which means four points separate us and Nottingham Forest, and five points separate us and Luton Town, who of course are in the relegation zone. Everton have got a game in hand on both Luton Town and Nottingham Forest, so it was a, a absolutely huge, huge game of football going into it. And I said on the instant match reaction. I wasn't looking forward to it whatsoever. I really, really wasn't. And and one of the reasons as to not doing a podcast last week on top of being busy and, and everything going on with uh with life was I knew the two topics we were gonna talk about was A, an absolute disaster six nil defeat at Stanford Bridge, and then B, a game against Nottingham Forest, which I felt going into it. I didn't feel very good about good about whatsoever. I'll be honest. I didn't think Everton had come away with anything. I thought it would be a typical sort of home performance and a typical performance we've seen this season under Sean Dyche at Goodison Park, where we turn up, we're simply not good enough. We don't take our chances, and the opposition team, you know, hits us on the break and and, and puts the ball in the back of the net and comes away with the three points. We've sorted against Luton. We've sorted against Wolves. We've sorted against Fulham. We've sorted against West Ham. We've seen it numerous times this season, and. I just had this gut feeling that Sunday was going to be another example of that. So I wasn't looking forward to it whatsoever. Um, I remember saying to me, Dad stood in the uh, in 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 the in the gantry, not the gantry, in the um, you know the bit where you get a sausage roll. I can't remember. I've had a long, long day. I've been all the way to Birmingham today and back, so I'm I'm quite tired. Uh, but I remember standing there before the game and saying to me, Dad, I'm I'm, tr- I'm not looking forward to this one whatsoever. I've, I've got a really, really bad feeling about this one, and I think if it is to go the way I think it will go, and maybe it was just me being a negative, pessimistic Evertonian, but um, I said to him, if it is to go the way I think it could go, I don't really want to be here when it turns that toxic because it would it would have and if, if Everton would have lost on Sunday it would have been a, a, a really negative uh, atmosphere to be a part of of course it would have the worry the anxiety the stress would have crept in uh, amongst Evertonians and it, and it wouldn't have been a very nice place to be at Goodison Park uh, on Sunday had we have lost but we didn't. We turned up um, when we needed to, and that's not something we've been able to say about this Everton side in recent times, but they did. They turned up when they needed to, and they, 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 they put in a performance that was good enough to come away with a huge, huge three points. Was it an unbelievable world-class performance? No, <clears throat> it wasn't an unbelievable world-class performance. And, you know, again, I've said this before, and I'll say it again, there seems to be this thing at the moment uh, with Evertonians, and I've, I've spoke about this before, where you're either... It feels like that the fan base is divided between people that will defend the manager and not defend the players, and then people that will defend the players and not defend the manager. It, I think it, it works both ways. You know, both the manager and the players haven't been good enough of late, and both the manager and the players have been responsible for you know the position and the situation that Everton are in at the moment, and that is just the fact of the matter. As I've said before, we can talk about point deductions until we're blue in the face, but the reality is, you know, no win in 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 four months, um, and sort of one win since December, two wins since December is is really not good enough, and that is the reason we're in a relegation battle now. Yes, had we have had the additional eight points, we be completely out of it of course we would and and we'd be flying but um it doesn't excuse the form uh in, in sort of the last few months and I think both the manager and the players have to take responsibility for that however I've also said over the last couple of months that these players are better than what they are showing even though I fully completely agree with 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 the majority of of blues and, and with the consensus that this isn't a, a great squad. I agree with that. I don't think it is a great squad. I don't think it's filled with a huge amount of talent. I don't think it's, um, you know, I don't think we've got enough players that are able to win games of football almost single-handedly. I don't think we've got enough players that are able to take games by the scruff of the neck and go and, um, you know, pull us out the shit if we need to. Uh, however, 
like I've said before, I have always believed that the players were good and were, were, were much better than what they were showing. Um, I put that on the manager, <clears throat> and when I said that a couple of months ago, I, you know, I, it was met with a lot of backlash and people saying, "No, the players are absolutely dreadful. It's the worst squad we've ever had. The the you know the manager's getting everything he can out of them. It's nothing to do with him. It's the players, this, that, and the other." And I always felt that wasn't right, and I feel like watching that performance on Sunday has proven me right because yes we weren't absolutely outstanding yes we weren't unbelievable it wasn't like we turned up and we absolutely wiped the floor with Nottingham Forest I'm not saying that however we were much much better than what we have been in recent weeks we were actively trying to win the game we were playing the ball around nicely we didn't score from two set pieces we didn't score from a scruffy mistake in a corner we scored two nice goals from open play well worked goals you know players looked like they were playing with a little bit of confidence looked like they were playing with a little bit of momentum looked like they were enjoying themselves out there and that is the key you know, nobody is saying that we expect to turn up at Goodison Park and watch this team win 4-5-0 or five nil every week. Nobody's saying we expect these players that we know are very, very limited in their ability to all of a sudden play like, you know, Barcelona 2008. No. But we expect two things and two things as a minimum. One of them is that they give 110% every single time they put that shirt on. And I think this performance... As, 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 as improved as it was, I think it was a reaction to how bad it was on Monday night because I come out here and, I, you know, I said on the um, instant match reaction to the Chelsea game, I've defended the players before by coming out and saying I think they're better than what they are and, and again, I've said that multiple times, or, sorry, better than what they're showing and again, I've said that multiple times over the course of the last few months or so. However, I will not accept and, and I'm not willing to accept any Everton player who goes onto that pitch in a royal blue shirt and thinks oh I'm just gonna throw the towel in here I can't be arsed get me off this pitch and that is how I felt those players um that's how I felt they were on on on, on Monday night against Chelsea that's what I felt the attitude was very much a throw the towel in we can't be arsed attitude and it wasn't good enough so Sunday I think was very much a reaction to Monday's performance, and that is a positive. But also, you know, we talk about uh, players giving a hundred and ten percent. I also want to see this Everton team going out and actively looking like they want to win a game of football, actively picking the ball up and trying to move it forward, trying to create opportunity, not just defending, 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 getting the ball, lumping it up, or giving it away, or putting it out of play, defending, 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 lumping it back up and giving it away, defend, defend. No, I want to see us put it on the floor, I want to see us play it about a bit, I want to see us get at teams, I want to see us have a go at teams, because look at what happens when we did, <coughs> you know, Nottingham Forest, probably before Sunday, seen as the, 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 the team with the most quality out of the five that are sort of floating in and around the, the, the bottom of the table. I don't count Brentford and uh, Crystal Palace because I really don't think Brentford and Crystal Palace are, are in any danger of going down. But out of Sheffield United, Burnley, Luton and ourselves and Forest, I feel like Forest have probably got the best squad, the better players. And that's why I had so much dread going into this game because I felt some of our performances of late, it, it felt like it was a golden opportunity for Forest to turn up put a performance in, beat us and, and you know, ultimately take themselves a big step closer to, to Premier League survival. But we didn't. We turned up. We wanted to win the game. We wanted to play football. We wanted to move it forward. And even if it wasn't the greatest performance of all time, even if it wasn't free flow and even if it wasn't particularly easy to watch, at least they had a go. And look what happens when they had a go. They won the game. And, 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 and I think they won the game relatively comfortably. I'll be honest. I don't think Nottingham Forest were very good whatsoever. Um, and I know, you know, we'll talk about the penalties in just a second, which I think is a really interesting conversation. But, um, yeah, <clears throat> I don't think Nottingham Forest were, were very good whatsoever. I thought he were poor. <clears throat> I thought Anthony Alanga when he come on, was, was poor. Didn't really get a foot on the ball. Didn't really get a, you know, an opportunity. And and he's been one of their better players this season. I thought Callum Hudson Odoi was poor. Thought Morgan Gibbs White was poor. Done nothing but moan to the referee all afternoon. And we took advantage of that. And 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 listen, I don't care if Nottingham Forest had a hundred and eighty six 
errors against them. I don't care if they should have had 70 or 8 penalties, which they shouldn't, by the way, and we'll talk about them in a moment. I don't care whether they've released 100 statements about how badly they've been done. I'm not asked. All as I'm asked about is Everton got those three points. And Alan Shearer was absolutely spot on on his podcast yesterday. Forget the, the, the talk about Forrest and their penalties. The most important thing at this stage in the season, at this end of the table, is picking up the three points. No matter how you do it, no matter which way you do it, no matter how you go about it, the most important thing is picking up those three points. And those three points have given us a really, really, really good platform. Now, two wins out the last three, two clean sheets out the last three as well, which is uh, obviously hugely improved on, 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 on the previous few months. Um, and we're now, I'd say, one or two wins away from being able to sort of enjoy the last couple of games of the season without having to worry, I'll be honest. And, and, and that is a position I'm not quite sure I thought Everton would be in two or three weeks ago. Um, let's talk about the penalties then, because we didn't talk about them in the instant match reaction because I hadn't seen them. Um, <clears throat> I was walking home from the game on Sunday and I seen the statement from Nottingham Forest um, and firstly I thought what are they doing like I I understand their frustration with officials and I understand the need to call out officials when they perform badly but the way in which they did it was always going to put them in a very very difficult position at this stage of the season and they are you know, there's 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 a potential there that they've broken Premier League rules that could end in another point deduction for Nottingham Forest. And if Nottingham Forest get another point deduction, they are absolutely done, by the way. So I think it was a bit silly the way they did it. But I do get the frustration. You know, the referees are completely incompetent and they're not good enough in this league. I've been saying it for years. I've been saying it for absolute years. The, the referees in this league are some of the worst in world football. So I was walking home. I read the statement. I, you know, I remember thinking... But yeah, that's a bit that, that's a bit um going sort of all guns blazing, isn't it? Um and then I come straight home and I've done the instant match reaction and in that time I'd not seen any of the penalty claims. I'd not seen any of the videos, I'd not seen any of the replays, I'd just seen a statement from Nottingham Forest saying we should have had three penalties today. And then I saw an interview from Nico Williams saying we should have had three penalties today. So I did the instant match reaction, I went home and I thought, you know what? Let me have a look at these penalties because I want to see how clear these actually are because not often do Everton get away with a VAR decision in that manner. Never mind with three VAR decisions in the same game. And I'll be honest, I expected this. I expected to watch the replays and think, well, that's an overreaction from Forrest. I expected to watch the replays and think, I'm not sure about that. And I did. Look, firstly, I'll hold my hands up. I'll admit the third challenge uh, from Ashley Young where he gets tangled behind, is it Callum hudson Adoy, and he uh, he takes him down in the box. That probably should be a penalty, yeah. If that would have been given against us, I'd have had no issue holding my hands up and saying, that's stupidity from Ashley Young. What's he doing there? I think we've got away with one there. I'll be honest, I think we've got away with one. That, on another day, could have easily been given and... <clears throat> even I am very confused as to why it wasn't given, considering, <clears throat> you know, considering we are Everton and, 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 you know, we usually and typically aren't allowed to get away with things like that. I think the excuse Nottingham Forest used in their um, statement was quite hysterical as well, that we warned the PGMOL that the VAR was a Luton fan. Well, Luton currently sits on 25 points before this game on Sunday. Forest sat on 26 points and Everton sat on 27 points. Why would a Luton fan want Everton to win the game? Especially given Luton have got to play Everton at their home ground. So if anything... If they if he want if, we, if they would have wanted anyone to win the game, it would have been Forrest because it was because it would have meant that <clears throat> their Premier League survival effectively would have been in their own hands when they played Everton at Kenilworth Road in a, in in a, in a week or so time, couple of weeks time. So I'm not quite sure why they seem to think a Luton fan would have preferred Everton to win over Forrest. As I said, if anything, really that he would have wanted a draw if it was a bias situation but if anything it, it would it would have been better for Forrest to win that game for Luton than, than Everton win the game. Anyway, let's move on. Um yeah, I think the third one we've gotten away with. I'll be honest, I think we've gotten away with and I think it's a mistake. 
Now, this might be controversial, and you might be listening thinking, controversial, Cam, you're never controversial. What, you know, what are you about to say? I actually think it's embarrassing that people are so adamant that the other two are penalties. I think it's laughable. I think it's absolutely laughable. Now, have we seen them given as penalties this season? Yes, we have. We've seen them given for Man United, for Liverpool, for Arsenal, for Chelsea, for Man City, for Tottenham. But just a word to Nottingham Forest and any other fan of any other Premier League club that thinks that these decisions were disgraceful and Nottingham Forest have been robbed. The other 14 teams don't get them penalties. They just don't. And I can prove that. Dominic Calvert-Lewin has been fouled maybe five or six times this season in the same manner of which Callum Hudson-Odoi was fouled in the first incident. And Everton have had zero penalties for them. Zero penalties for it. We were told in all occasion, on all occasions there's not enough contact for a player to go down. Bearing in mind, by the way, <clears throat> the Forest player plants his foot after the contact. So there's contact. He then plants his foot and then throws himself over. It's never a penalty in a million years. There's not enough contact for a start. And there's clearly not enough contact because he plants his foot. If there was enough contact, he wouldn't have been able to plant his foot. He'd have gone down. Never a penalty. And like I said, it's embarrassing to suggest so. And just because you've seen Man United giving them in the last 10 minutes of a game when they need to win, or you've seen Arsenal giving them in a key moment, doesn't mean that every other team gets them. And it certainly doesn't mean that it's a foul because it isn't a foul because the moment you plant your foot after being kicked or or, or, or contact being made, you are effectively admitting that it's not enough to, to, to make you go down because you've planted your foot again. So the first one is never a penalty. And just because we've seen them given a couple of times is more of a reflection on the incompetence and the inability of Premier League referees to follow a rule book and use common sense because anybody with half a brain cell would tell you that that's not enough contact to go down. And as I said, if Forest fans are listening and you're thinking, oh, you're chatting, I'll, I'll go and get the three or four times it's happened to Dominic Calvert-Lewin this season and Everton, and it's been ignored. For the start, it happened last season when Everton played Nottingham Forest. And it was ignored. We should have had a penalty. Should have had a penalty. Second one, this for me is even more laughable than the first. Does the ball strike Ashley Young's arm? Yes, it does. But we know the handball rule isn't as black and white as if it strikes your arm, it's a penalty. Let me just bring Nottingham Forest fans' memories back to when Everton played Fulham in the Premier League away from home this season, a game which ended in a draw, a game which, had it have ended in a win, would have been a huge, huge win for Everton. Everton were denied a penalty when the crossbar was rattled the ball bounced off of it and Anthony Robinson's arm was over here on the line. The ball struck his arm, stayed out of the goal and it was cleared and no penalty was given. Bearing in mind his arm was out here on the line, on the goal line. No penalty was given. It was never spoken about again. Never spoken about. Brushed over. Don't even think it was mentioned on match of the day. Ignored. Move on. Don't worry about it. Another side note to that, incest and side note. The VAR official on that day was a not was 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 from the, the county of Nottingham. So, you know, Nottingham Forest co- coming out and crying. Oh, the VAR official was a Luton fan. Well, Everton were rejected a blatant penalty against Fulham when the VAR was a Nottingham County official. So you know reverse, right back at you. <clears throat> but, anyway, more to the point. It's never a penalty. It's never a penalty. Firstly, Ashley Young is a yard away. And therefore, <clears throat> it shouldn't count. My, in my opinion, the rule should be, if you are within three or four yards, it's not a penalty. It's not a penalty. Unless you purposely do that, or your arms are here, and you make a movement towards the ball, then, yeah, fine. But if your arm's already out here and you're a yard away and a player smashes it at you, no, nonsense, absolute nonsense. Secondly, he's on the turn. He's on the turn, Ashley Young. The cross is coming in. He's looking at it that way. He turns his body. 
Name me a name me one human being you've ever met who turns their body like that with their arms behind the back. No, he looks at it, he turns his body as he turns, it smashes him on the arm there. From you know the 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 Fulham player, uh, sorry, the Forest player gets it back, he turns, smashes it on his arm. Never a penalty, and it's laughable to suggest so. It's laughable to suggest so. It's embarrassing. It's absolutely embarrassing to suggest so. Third one, no issue with it. We got very very lucky. We got very very lucky and. Yeah, that probably should have been a penalty. It was silly by Ashley Young, um, and I'm 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 very 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 um surprised that it wasn't given. Very 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 surprised that it wasn't given. However, the other two are laughable, and just because one of them should have been a penalty, and just because one of them was a mistake, doesn't mean that every other time a Forest player touched the ball in our box, they should have had a penalty. And that's what I think is laughable is 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 there's there's a mistake there. There's quite a clear mistake there. And if Forrest would have come out and said on the seventieth minute or whatever it was, we were denied a penalty when we should have been given one and just use that one example, <clears throat> I think a lot of people would have gone, Do you know what? Fair enough, it, it was a foul. The fact that they've tried to use any moment a Forest player has thrown himself over in the box as should have been a penalty <clears throat> is it's embarrassing from Nottingham Forest it really really is embarrassing because you know what even Danny Murphy who hates Everton Football Club even Danny Murphy sat down on match of the day on Sunday night and said those first two are not penalties they're just not penalties and they're not they're absolutely not just because you've seen Man United get one doesn't mean it's a penalty. It actually means that we may be looking at something a little bit deeper here. Maybe we are. We all know the referees are incompetent. We all know the referees are not good enough. But I can assure you now, out of the other 14 teams, not one of them gets those penalties. Certainly not Everton. Certainly not Everton. Everton have had two penalties this season. We should have had 28. So, you know, maybe the luck was on our side. Maybe the luck was on our side. And, and, and I find it funny because I'm seeing a lot of people on sort of socials and stuff saying things like, well, if they're being given, we wouldn't have been able to moan. Oh, oh yes, we would. Oh, yes, we would. If the referee had have given a, a penalty for that handball on Ashley Young, I'd have sat here and screamed and shouted for half an hour. Because it would have been a nonsense decision. A nonsense decision. The same as the first one. There's a little bit of contact. But when it's us, we're told it's not enough contact to go down. So why the fuck should it be enough contact for every other team in the league? No. Absolutely not. No. Um. So yeah. <clears throat> the referee got one wrong. He got one wrong. One. He didn't get three. He didn't get four. He got one wrong. And, yeah, fair enough. It's, you know, they're in a relegation battle. It was a huge game. It was a, it was a big moment in the game. Fair enough. They've, they're not happy with it and they want to complain. Um, I think they're stupid because I think the way in which they've gone about it, releasing that statement is going to get them in an awful lot of trouble and potentially see them face another point deduction, which would 100% see them relegated. But you know what? I've got no sympathy for them. I've got no sympathy whatsoever for them. I couldn't care less. And that's not because I'm a big... You know, thinking I'm a big hard knock Evertonian who hates every team in the league. No, no. If their fans had turned up and acted sensibly and turned up to support their team on Sunday, then I'd be sitting here saying, Do you know what, a little bit harsh that, you know, it, you know, I'd, I'd have been absolutely furious if it was the other way around. But fuck him. Like Jordan Pickford said, fuck him. Because if, as far as I'm concerned, if you're willing to turn up to Goodison Park and chant about poverty, and chant about unemployment, and chant about people struggling, and people um, not being able to afford to live in this current climate, all whilst one of our players is on the floor, chanting about cheating scousers whilst one of our players is unconscious on the floor with a serious head injury, as far as I'm concerned, you can fuck off back to where you belong in the championship. I've got no sympathy for you whatsoever and I've never been happier to see a referee make a blinding mistake than I was on Sunday because that you deserve it. You absolutely deserve it. 
And for anybody saying it's a minority, it's not all. It probably is a minority. I'm not saying every single Forest fan is 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 like that. I'm not saying every single Forest fan was singing and chatting. But it wasn't three or four. It was pretty much their entire away end, or it sounded like their entire away end anyway. So, you know, don't act like that. Don't turn up and. As I've, I've said this before, and I'll say it again, it, it, it really gets to me, <clears throat> especially the poverty chants, because I think poverty chanting is as bad as, as disaster chanting. I really do. I, I put Feed the Scousers and chants like that in the same category as chants about Munich, chants about Hillsborough, chants about anything, and it's always ignored. It's never spoken about in the media. It's never. It's just it, it, it's ignored like it's okay, and I'm sick of football fans thinking they can use going to a game of football as an excuse to turn up and say, you know, whatever they want to say. Oh, I'm at a game of football and I've had a few bevies, so I can say what I want. No, you can't. No, you can't. And to any Forest fan that was singing and chanting that, you scum. You're the absolute scum of the earth, and you deserve exactly what you get. And your football club deserves exactly what it's going to get as well. So, there you go. So, any Forest fan that wasn't and feels embarrassed by their club's actions, fair play to you. And this obviously doesn't relate to you. But I've still not seen any of Nottingham Forest fans coming out and condemning it. And I've still not seen the club coming out and condemning it either. But they're quick to come out and try and cry about a penalty that was never a penalty. Do me a favour. Um. <clears throat> anyway, it was a huge win. It was a huge, huge, huge win in a, in a, in a big, big game and, and one that we um, we absolutely couldn't have afforded to to lose. And, and the fact that we come away with three points, I mean, as I said, it, it was a must win for me, but it had that sort of feeling going into it that it, the best we were going to get out of it was a point. And to come away with three is, is absolutely huge and sets us up really, really well for what is going to be a, a, a difficult couple of games between now and the end of the week. Um, just a little bit of channel admin before we go into talking about that Merseyside derby. I, I do want to talk a little bit more about the Forest win as well. I want to talk about the goals individually. Um, but just a little bit of admin work before we go into that. I will not be at the Brentford game on Saturday. I'm at a wedding all day, so unfortunately there'll be no instant match reaction. I might do a sort of delayed match reaction on the Sunday when I've watched the highlights and I've sort of got a feel... Um, for the game but there won't be an instant match reaction on Saturday because I will not be at the game I will be at a wedding um podcast shouldn't be affected too much the podcast next week will be as is um we will talk about the in the next episode of the podcast we'll talk about the Liverpool game and the Brentford game and then the upcoming game the following weekend I'm not sure who it's against I can't remember uh, but there won't be a podcast in between Liverpool and Brentford now there will be an instant match reaction to the Merseyside derby tomorrow night so look after that uh, look out for that one um but unless I get a little half an hour on Thursday which maybe I will do there probably won't be a podcast between Liverpool and Brentford but if there isn't then after the Brentford game, we'll do one where we cover Liverpool, Brentford, and then the following game. So don't worry about that. Um, but yeah, as I said, a, a really, really good performance. Thought both goals were well worked. Uh, lovely to see Adrissa Garnagay getting on the score sheet. Lovely to see Adrissa Garnagay keeping his shot on target, isn't it? To be honest, it's not often we've been able to say that. So uh, it was a, a delight to see that ball rustle into the back of the net instead of rustle into Rosehead, uh, as it typically does. Um, Dwight McNeil as well, great to see him back on the score sheet. A player who obviously has struggled this season to find form, struggled this season to um to sort of settle down and, and, and really get any sort of consistency behind them. So absolutely brilliant to see him back on the score sheet. And like I said in the instant match reaction on Sunday, I think Garner Gay's goal and, and the fact that Garner Gay was able to, to take his goal so well. <laughs> It looked like it almost gave McNeil a little bit of confidence. It looked like McNeil picked it, picked the ball up for his effort and thought, you know what, I'm going to have a go here because I've, I've just seen Garner do it and, you know, it was a, an absolutely fantastic finish. So, um, you know, absolutely brilliant goal and, and what a win and what a, what a what a fantastic time to get the win as well with, with the game, you know, on um, 
on Wednesday night tomorrow. Uh, uh, if we were to win a game of football over the next few weeks to give us a big confidence boost going into the next game, it would have been that game against Forest because tomorrow night, 8 o'clock, Goodison Park, the Merseyside derby, the game that I absolutely dread all year round. Um, I hate them. I absolutely hate them. Uh, I hate the, the the feeling you get from the moment you wake up until the moment the ball you know is is kicked for the first time at kick off. I hate the feeling you get for the ninety minutes throughout the game, and more often than not, I hate the feeling you get after the game as well because it's not very often it's a happy one. Uh, but we do play Liverpool tomorrow. Thirty three games they have played, seventy four points currently sat joint top of the Premier League table. But, of course, Manchester City do have a game in hand on both them and Arsenal, and Arsenal play tonight as well. So there is a possibility Arsenal are um, three points better off after they play Chelsea this evening. Um, 22 wins for them lot this season, eight draws and three defeats. And, obviously, they are in a, a, a difficult moment, shall we say, at the moment, for, certainly for, for Liverpool, you know, one defeat um, or two defeats in, in sort of however many games for them is is not necessarily the worst in the world. I would absolutely love for Everton to have lost two games in the last 300 years or whatever it is. But for the standards of Liverpool Football Club and for what their goals would have been in, in, in you know, in, in sort of the latter um stages of last year when the manager announced that he would be leaving at the end of the season i think it's fair to say they're not quite where they thought they'd be they are still very much in a title race and one minor slip up from manchester city means that it's very possible they could still win the premier league um but as i said since that sort of middle of march when they lost to manchester united in the cup final uh they did pick up a couple of premier league wins post that but then they had a draw with manchester united at old trafford they obviously had that defeat to atalanta in the europa league which ultimately meant them going out of the europa league and the defeat to crystal palace in the premier league at anfield as well they did beat fulham last time out uh which i suppose is a little bit of a confidence booster for them but tomorrow is huge it's absolutely huge, and it's huge for a number of reasons. It's not only huge because it's a Merseyside derby. It's huge because it's a Merseyside derby of some significance. You know, if Everton are to win this game, not only do we practically put ourselves in a very, very good position to be safe, I think we'd be one win away then from safety. And bearing in mind, we've got Brentford to play at Goodison. We've got Luton to play away. We've got Sheffield United to play at Goodison. I didn't give Everton to get to... 36 points, I can't see Luton picking up 11 points in their next uh, four games. I just I, 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 I just can't. Um, <laughs> but it's also an opportunity for us to effectively end their hopes of winning a Premier League title because if Arsenal are to win today and that puts them on 77 points and then Manchester City are to win their two games in hand, which would put them on 79 points, Liverpool would effectively be out the title race with only four games to go. They'd be five points behind, um, you know, whoever the leaders were. And obviously that is completely hypothetical and that, that relies on A, Man City winning their two games and Arsenal winning their game tonight, but also B, Everton beating Liverpool, which is the biggest sort of... Um, <clears throat> what if out of all of this but it's a huge huge Merseyside derby and and it's a Merseyside derby of huge significance um and <clears throat> for the first time in a long long time I've sat and done numerous Merseyside derby previews on this channel I've spoken about so many Merseyside derbies over the years and often I sit here and I say things like don't play the occasion play the team you know, don't go into it and play the Merseyside derby, play the Liverpool side, because we've had Merseyside derbies, not necessarily in recent years, but we've had Merseyside derbies when I was growing up where Everton had a better team than Liverpool, Everton had better players, Everton had a better structure, Everton's manager was, you know, in, in, in seeming, seemingly in, in, in a better form or a better manager than what Liverpool had at the time, and it never worked. We were never, we were very rarely able to go out and beat Liverpool by playing the team. 
we we went into it often. We played the occasion, and even though they may not have had a better team, they turned up and they still beat us. And by the way, that happened two or three years before any of the copites jump in and go, "When have you ever been better than us?" It was a it was a couple of years, a period of a couple of years. Obviously, that's not the case now, and I think this is one of those rare sort of Merseyside derbies where we probably should play the occasion and not the team, um, because if Everton try and turn up and play you know, and uh, try and outplay Liverpool and try and out-attack them and try and be better than them, it's very plausible and very possible that um, they'll come away with a, with, with a comfortable three points because they, they are a fantastic side. They've got fantastic players. They've got an immense amount of quality there and they're a very, very difficult team to try and beat, a very, very difficult team to try and beat. But if Everton go and play the occasion and make it hard for them and rough them up a little bit and battle with them and get at them and get in their face and make it difficult and uh, and um you know make it physical and uh, in a clever way by the way I, I don't mean physical in an Ashley Young getting sent off in the opening half an hour for kicking people up and down way I mean physical as in in a clever way I think there's a possibility we can come away with something here under the lights of Goodison Park is a huge, huge factor. The atmosphere hasn't been great at Goodison in recent times. It really, really hasn't. And we've had numerous games where we've gone into them thinking it'll be a bear pit today. The atmosphere will be great. It'll be amazing. And it's not been. And we've ended up losing the game or we've not got the result we wanted because the atmosphere, because the well, the atmosphere hasn't really, you know, it's it's been flat because the performance hasn't been good enough. The atmosphere was very good on Sunday. It was much, much better on Sunday than it has been at any point this season, probably. And I think it needs to be the same again tomorrow. I think we need to go into this and make Goldersham Park absolutely horrible for them and understand that this isn't only a potential to stop Liverpool winning the Premier League title, but if we win this game tomorrow, we effectively are out of it. And I know we're not technically because, you know, there's still games to be played, etc., etc. But we would be a one win with four games away from being, for me, safe and with not much to worry about. It would take a miracle for Luton, Burnley and Sheffield United to one of those teams to finish above us if Everton had to pick up six more points, in my opinion. So we need to think of it like that. This isn't just a case of stop them winning the league because we don't like them. This is a case of we've got a bit of momentum. We won on Sunday. It was a great win. We worked hard. We played well. Will we have to play better on tomorrow night? Yes, of course we will, because Liverpool are a much better team than Nottingham Forest. Of course they are. But <coughs> there's an opportunity for us to make a very, very, very special night out of this. And I'm not sure how many more special nights we've got between now and moving into the new stadium. I'm not sure how many nights we're going to have where we walk away from Goodison Park thinking, wow, this is the best feeling in the world. And I think it would be it would be magnificent to make tomorrow one of them. Now, obviously, with these games, as is every year, there's a, there's a huge possibility that Liverpool turn up and are just too good for us, too much quality, and put four or five past us. But given Crystal Palace were able to turn up at Anfield with a game plan, couple of weeks ago and beat this Liverpool team granted Liverpool missed a lot of chances but still take the game to them and beat them <coughs> shows that there's vulnerabilities there <coughs> and there is vulnerabilities to expose and it's up to Sean Dyche and those players to go and expose them because if Everton win tomorrow night not only would they practically put us safe but it would also be the biggest bit of positivity and the biggest you know, bit of, of happiness and momentum we'd have had probably in the three years that we've been going through what we've been going through. So, yeah, I'm not going to sit here and say I expect us to win. I'm not going to sit here and say, uh, you know, I think we will win. But I just think what I want to see, I want to see us make it difficult for them. I want us to see us make it hard. I want to see us make it physical. I want to see us battle with them. I want to see us have a go with them. I don't want to see us throw the towel in again and lose convincingly. I want to see us get at them and, and take the game to them because, I don't know, I've just got to feel them. Maybe it's just because it's a derby and we've won a game and I'm a bit little, getting a little bit excited and ahead of myself, but I don't know, I've just got to feel them.
I've just got a feeling. Anyway, we're going to leave it there. A little bit of a short one today, but as I said, I've been in the car all day, so I want to go and relax and, and do nothing for the rest of the evening. So if you have enjoyed it, please, please do leave a like. We will be back tomorrow with the instant match reaction to the Merseyside derby, so look out for that one. And then, as I said, we'll have a podcast up within the next week or so as well. So big, big thank you all for watching. Leave a like if you have enjoyed it. Subscribe if you are new, and we'll see you after.